Yes, Tim, I've got something kind of interesting that's uh, for option traders and speculators. Um, so another chart thing, uh, as you know, last week, if you were here last week, looking at the Geno Gems, we uh, added this thing over here called ATR, an expected move. You know, that was just a little, little uh, time saver versus having it down here. Um, just little things like this to make life easy. I call them trader hacks, you know, but little gauges that kind of help you navigate through the market. I want to add another one of my favorite ones as an option trader. And this is one you've actually used, Tim. And I think Mark uses this one also. Um, I'm looking at, you know, any chart here. I just picked Apple for an example. And what I have over here, I don't know if you see it. It's a purple cone shaped thing. You see all this cone right here? That is called a probability cone. And you can get this on certain softwares, option softwares, of course, Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, that kind of thing. If you click in here, it's called probability of expiring cone. And to find it, you just type in P-R-O-B. There's only one thing, you double click, it'll put it in there. And what I wanna highlight here is a hack on this uh, indicator. It's defaulted for 100 days out, 68%. Now, I'm not going to get into the mathematics of it because we don't have time. But basically what that means, Tim, is, is it's a standard deviation pricing model, meaning one standard deviation. So to make it better in layman's terms, it's going out on this cone. And as you can see, prices here, this is the next expiration, October 15th. It's saying based on option prices, one standard deviation, which is 68%. This is what the options are pricing on the downside range or the upside. So there's a 68% probability it'll stay in this range. The probability of it expiring inside this cone is about two thirds, so 68%. So it kind of gives you a guesstimate based on something we talked about last week, expected move. Based on option prices looking forward, you just have to say, okay, well, you know, if this is the expected range, put that together with your outlook. So I'm looking at, you know, I'm just not, not giving any advice here. I'm just looking at Apple just because uh, it was the first one I was typing in on my watch list. So I'm in a bearish trend on a daily here. I could be drawing it like this. And looking at this, I might have a target of, let's say, I don't know, my bearish target might be 121 down there on the cone. So as an option trader, I say, okay, here's 121. Options aren't pricing that in possibly until November. If I'm going to buy puts and play that down move here, I need to buy puts that are longer than November. I need to come out here and buy ones that expire because I don't want my options to expire before it hits my target. So it kind of gives me a guesstimate based on time, uh, projections of option prices, and it's got volatility baked into it because option prices are fluctuating with volatility. As they get more expensive, the cone gets wider. So as a buyer, I kind of have, you know, a projection here. And then there's one more thing, the hack I like about this, and this is what we do as option traders, we try to figure things out is, Here's support here. I'm putting a support line here. I'm just going to randomly throw one in here. Okay, that's my support of 120. It's got a range of 121. What if I want to do something like a credit spread? Well, then I would sell options below this. I want to sell options outside this. So I'd look for strike prices. Like let's say I'm looking at this November 19th date. I want to sell strike prices 120 or less. I want to sell strike prices lower. If I'm bullish and I don't want my stock taken away if I own shares or I want to do a credit spread on the upside with calls, I would sell calls above 155 because what it's saying here, Tim, and check this out, is if this is 68% probability of being inside here, there's a 32%, and let me just do a quick math here, 16% here and 16% here, that it's going to get outside this cone. So here's my hack. Here's my little gym, what I do. I'm going to go back in here. And you see this probably an expiring cone? I'm going to put another one. I want to put my own gauge in there. I want better odds as a credit spread, naked put, faded trader. And I'm going to change the 68. Now, you can change it to whatever you want. And I changed mine to 85. I know some people use 90. Some people use 
95 for two standard deviations, but I use 85 for a couple of reasons. I'll show you why. When I put that in here, in fact, so it stands out, I'm going to make this one, I'm going to make this one green, make it green here and see if that works. And you're going to see this is 85%. So when I'm looking at this green cone here, this standing out, notice it's wider because now it's an 85% range. And as an option seller, that means there's only a 15% chance of it going outside the cone. So basically lower odds than this purple cone. So it makes the strikes that I'm selling farther. So when I'm looking at support, maybe I don't want to be assigned. I'll look down here at uh, these options down here and I'll say, okay, looking at support, I want to be outside this cone. And it makes it pretty easy because I can see, well, 85% is 115. I want to make sure I'm selling options below 115 or above 165. It gives me better odds as a seller for it expiring worthless. So I know I'm selling outside that predicted range. So the odds are in my favor. Those options are going to expire worthless. Now, let's say I want to sell options for December. I could go and say, okay, where's December's expiry? I got to sell a strike price below 109 on the call side. Maybe I'm doing a bear call, a credit spread, an iron condor. I sell above 171 and below 109. And also, Tim, what I found is by using an 85% cone, it helps me save time. And that's what these hacks are about. When you go to the option chain, when you look at those strikes above there, almost most of the time, not almost, but almost always, those options are going to have a delta less than 10. So that gives me 90% odds. So my delta is going to be below 10 almost all the time on an 85% cone, not on a 68 that way it saves me time knowing, okay, I know what leg I'm going to sell. I know what my delt is and so on and so forth. So that is the probability cone and you can change the parameters in here, depending on your system. And you can save that. You can save that study simply by one study, save study. I'm going to call this my 85 prob cone, just like that. And that will be in my studies. So I can just jump to it next time. There it is right there. Boom. Mm -hmm. It just gives you a quick gauge of outlook. And you put that together with your support resistance. So real quickly, looking at support in Apple, if I'm going to November. I want the 114 strike or 115 strike and below. If I'm doing calls, I want 165 and up to sell. If I'm a buyer, these are my targets on the 68 cone. And I know I need, if I'm going to hit that, I need at least two, maybe three or four months out in time to do it. So for both buying and selling, great little barometer, great little scale, great little indicator. That's what I got for you.